Catherine from Montreal. Say that again. I'm going to actually record. Okay, no, I didn't do it. <clears throat> so, hello to Catherine from Montreal, Canada. Hello, Hila. And we've already started to talk. We've been sharing a little bit, so we're in the juice of it already. Yes, we are. <laughs> and now we're recording because I felt, <clears throat> as I was following you, Catherine, in the past few months, that that what you've experiencing and what you've shared on Facebook can be very valuable to a lot of us that are going through a similar process or have been going or will be going. So, uh, and I'm really glad that you're, uh, you're um, open to do that. Absolutely. So we were in the middle of, of actually talking about life and and the journey and some points in our lives where something happens and then it almost forces us to go deeper and ask some major questions that were usually not encouraged by family culture the education system so the big questions of, you know, I'm feeling not comfortable or why this is happening to me or what's my purpose or why am I not feeling fulfilled despite one, two, three, four that I've already done and supposed to be successful according to the norm, what's expected from me, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. yeah, and I just wanted to say that you are a certified coach and you're trained by the work. Byron yeah. Katie. Certified facilitator of the work of Byron Katie. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you have started your business and yep. you're ready to help other people to do the work. Absolutely. Question our beliefs about everything, about ourselves about others, about life, about everything. Right. Where did it start for you? Do you remember like the turning point or the moment where you were like, okay, I'm doing it? Well, I was just writing about this today because I was writing a bio. So the timely, timely question. Actually, you know, um, it's back in 2009. And I was hosting a dinner uh, with friends and um, I was agonizing over my romantic relationship. And, and then um, a friend handed me a book of, of Byron Katie. I think it was, um, I Need Your Love, Is It True? And I said, oh, thank you, you know? I was curious. So, but I read that book overnight. I got so, so like that, those words of Byron Katie resonated so deeply with me. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, like this, sometimes it happens. You, you read something and it just catches you. It, 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 it's, you, you, you're fully in it. Same happened with the power of now for me with Eckhart Tolle and by Eckhart Tolle. So anyway, started reading Byron Katie and and I said, that's it. I really need to do this because she was talking about this approach called the work. And, and the work is about uh, questioning our beliefs with actually four questions and turnarounds. And, and, and then I'm like, okay, let's do this. And I started questioning whatever was present for me, like anything that was stressful, uh, I, would, uh, I, I would start questioning. And, and I, would, I would go from one discovery to another discovery. It was like, it was amazing. It was aha moments, like one after the other. And I was living in Montreal at the time and it just started a, um, uh, not, not yet, but not long after I started a new relationship, which brought me to Vancouver. And, and uh, as I was in Vancouver, it was very close to Los Angeles. And then I, I, I decided to go do the school for the work with Byron Katie for nine days uh, in 2010, in October 2010. So 
so when I did the school, uh, it, it just went deeper and deeper. And then I decided to uh, start in the certification program. It took me a long time though, and a lot of resistance as well, because I had a few years, at least a couple of years where, you know, the work works, uh, you know, it, the work works if we're really dropping into the heart and if we really want to know the truth. Um, but if we do the work with an agenda, like kind of an idea, we, we, you know, like if I want to do the work because I want to get to that place, um, at one point it stops working. And that's what happened to me. I, 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 I hit a wall where I, I was doing the work with an agenda. And, and I was, what was your agenda? Do you, do you remember what was the agenda? What was my agenda? I don't remember anymore now, but, um, it was probably around wanting specific results. Like, uh, like, like wanting peace or wanting, you know, that particular aspect. It's very interesting because, um, if you're wanting a specific result, the mind will interfere to to try and and um you know it, it will i'm looking for the word um anyway it will but interfere it will in the process you, it will show you all the things that are in your way to it it'll bring it up because we all have it and and part of let's say our program is that we can see it so so therefore we have some beliefs or we have some wishes and desires however you know we we need to jump those hoops and and we don't know that so we do <laughs> well you know it, it was hidden from me that I didn't realize that that I had an agenda so basically what was happening is, is resistance so a part of me was like, oh, it's not working anymore. I'm tired of it. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm done. And, and up until the day where um, two certified facilitators that I knew were visiting Vancouver and they were giving a workshop at like a weekend and I decided to just go and do it again. So how and many years after 2010 was that? It was 2015. Okay, so five years later. Five years later, yeah. I mean, I've done the work in 2011 and 2012, but 2013, 2014, um, I kind of stopped. And then 2015, I, I, I went to that workshop and I got started again. And, and I discovered then that I was doing the work with the agenda. So it, it shifted for me. And, and, and now I started going you know, pretty deep again. And, and then, and then I got on track with my certification. Then I decided that I, I would really do this. And I, I invested hours and hours of my time. You know, I did, um, four schools. Um, I attended different events with Byron Katie. I did all basically the requirements and there are, there are many of them to, mm -hmm. uh, to become certified mm -hmm. and including the helpline and, um, yeah, so it was a, a major, major commitment to, uh, to do this. Uh, I did it at first not because I wanted to be certified. It's almost like, like I wanted to go as deep as I could with some kind of a container to support me in that, in, in that process. I wanted to go deep. And so what happened in 2015 once you made that commitment? What started to happen from you since? <clears throat> well, once you start questioning your beliefs, <laughs> um, sometimes you, you get access to truth that you may not have seen before, you know, things that you may not be aware of. Or, and sometimes you're like, oh my God, really? And sometimes you, you face things that it's not necessarily what you wanted or, you know, like, like it's emerging and, and it's, you can't help it. It's just happening. So, um, you know, for instance, um, 
like in my, you know, this beautiful romantic relationship I was in, a loving, I was with this beautiful loving man and, and we were getting, you know, we were such a great team uh, on so many levels. And yet there was a place where um, our path was kind of going like this, you know, like, like we're going like this, we're not going in the same direction. And it was so confusing uh, to realize that. And, and the mind, you know, didn't want to hear about this. And, 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 and yet, you know, the work would bring up um, awareness and um, that I, I couldn't. Can you give an example? Um, can I give an example? You said the work would give uh, 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 um, a taste of that, like when you did the yeah, work. Yeah, you know, it's hard to, to pinpoint because, uh, you know, the work, the work is, is, it's, it's, the work is basically always dealing with what's uh, in front of us, you know, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's just that sometimes we're, we're so stuck in, in, in certain beliefs that we don't have access to um, the clearer part of ourselves. And so once you start questioning certain beliefs and, and then they drop, all of a sudden there's more clarity. And, and you know, like if you're in survival, for instance, and, and you, you know, you, you, you're not questioning anything and you're in survival, then you, you don't even uh, think that it's possible to, that you can actually change your, your, your situation, that you could actually leave your job, that you could actually create something different. Um, you don't even, you know, when you're in survival, all you think of is, is to survive. So that's what the mind is. And is. is that the, was that the truth for you when you were in that relationship? Was, were, were you operating from survival? Therefore, it was hard for you to see other possibilities? Uh, I wouldn't say I was, I was uh, working uh, from survival. Um, no. Um, it, well, in some aspects, yes. Uh, not in all aspects, um, because it's a process. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a good question. I am, uh, I am, uh, I am, uh, I'm having a hard time answering uh, your question that precisely um, about, you know, how the work operated, because it's kind of a, it, it's, it's kind of happening increasingly. It's, it's, you know, we start questioning any, any like beliefs about our mother or father, our, our spouse, our children, our colleagues. And, and then it just, it's, it's happening on its own. And eventually um, things are shifting and like, Oh, you realize, Oh, this is no longer, um bothering me but then what happens is that once certain issues that are more on on top are being dealt with then whatever was underneath it is coming up so now you get to to see deeper things mm. that that relationships like if we go back to relationships yeah they are a beautiful petri dish they're like such a fertile soil for us to actually see what's going on where are we at what is coming up for us can we see it and if if there's a denial or if there's a place where we're uncomfortable or we're we're looking for distractions and if we're really committed then then the the questions are you know okay why am I doing that? What am I avoiding? What does it sit on? Or what is the fear here? What are the patterns that I'm running or rerunning? So, so with a relationship, you know, people mirror a lot or projecting a lot. I mean, I see it with my son. That's like my major 
teaching academy. Yes. Dennis Woodland. He's like, woohoo. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. My daughter was that too for me. Oh my God. Yes. They are our major, major mirror reflecting all our shit. <laughs> Absolutely. And also, I sometimes I see how I project stuff on it, and it's like he's just been doing his thing, and here I am with this and that, and I have this agenda, and I have it's like, whoa, whoa, let yeah. and, and then being the you know the beings that they are, it's like you know they, they say that the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree, so. My daughter, she, she, she was pretty good at, 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 at noticing, you know, all, all my contradictions and pointing them out to me. I'm like, oh, geez, yeah, you know, and, and, and confronting me um, on stuff. So it was, uh, yeah, she was an, ama an amazing, amazing uh, mirror. You know, the bottom line that I, I'm, I'm seeing with Ben, for example, is like, I'm learning about unconditional love and it's not what I thought it is. Mm. And sometimes like my spiritual teacher used to say, there's some tough love and it's not as easy to exercise it, but it's needed because there's some health, healthy boundaries that need to happen because ultimately it must come from your love for yourself and your understanding of um, being in integrity. Yes. And living from integrity. Yes. And love is not the emotion, I love you. No. It's something really bigger. It's the being of who you are integrated and showing up in each and every moment of your yeah. life and when my son for example crossing what i think are my boundaries you know there used to be a time where i was forgiving 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 and then i felt that resentment and anger and just so not comfortable in my solar plex and then i realized wow he's stepping he's like doesn't give a fuck and and no one in my life has the right to do that and i have to speak to that and take actions if necessary in order to really stay in integrity and feel the feelings that come up with that as well that's okay you know this is yeah. feelings those are I, feelings. I find that um one of the conditionings that happened through my spiritual seeking, you know, like uh, being a part of a spiritual community was that I adopted a new set of beliefs, like spiritual <laughs> beliefs. And, and some of them were, oh, got to be kind, got to be in the heart. And, you know, like a lot of this and, and almost as if, if we were to express um, power or anger or like clear boundaries or intentions that was not okay you know and and that was um a major point for me to notice you know how i was basically being conditioned like uh, through new beliefs which were spiritual ones and and much more um difficult to see you know like they were um they it were seems like they've created judgment, like a new set of judgment within you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I rebel at one point. I had to rebel against that as well, you know, like 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 no way. Like this thing. I had I had a a, a, a powerful aha moment one day. Um I like I, I could see, you know, like, like two voices in my head and uh, one, one that I was pretty good at identifying, but the other one, I thought it was me. So, okay. So I'm, I'm coming out of the shower looking at myself in the mirror. And then there's this voice that says, well, it may not be a bad thing if you lost a little bit of weight. <laughs> and then, and then immediately this other voice came up and said, what are you talking about? 
This is all about self-acceptance. You need to accept yourself. And then I'm like, what's going on? Who said that? This is all about acceptance and, and you know, that I have to love myself. I realized at that moment that it was another voice, that it was another conditioning and that that voice was trying to shut up mm. the one that said, oh, I'd left, you know, I'd like to, to lose some weight. And for me, it was like the child and the authority, like the spiritual voice became the authority and, mm. and no, you should be self-loving and self-accepting, which seems, shaming you know, the other one, kind of shaming the other voice, which is legit. You know, well, that's what it thinks because, because that voice, you know, it's like, no, you got to be self-accepting. You got to be self-accepting of yourself. But it became just another form of, of, of judgment. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been like this voice in me has been controlling the other one. And when I saw that, it was like a huge aha moment. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden I rebel, like, 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 I don't know what happened to me, but for that day, I, I became like a dragon. It's like, it's like, you dare try to stop me again with your, you know, like good thinking ways of how I should be, you know? And the, it went, it went crazy and it was very funny. It, it made me laugh because I, that day I, I, I was meeting my daughter at the pharmacy and, um, and we're at the cashier and, 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 and she didn't have any way, whatever, but I started, <laughs> the, the, the rebel one started to even acting angry with the cashier, you know, like, like, but it's not angry. It was more um, uh, in, intense, but very focused on wanting something that they had in their, you know, in, in their computer, but didn't feel like they wanted to get to. So, but I got very fierce and my daughter was looking at me. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> and then we laughed and I laughed because there was nothing um, personal. Yeah. You know, I realized that it was, it was just a dragon coming out and I allowed it. I, I didn't try and, and control my inner dragon that needed to express itself. So um, it, it continued for a while like this. Uh, giving, letting, letting this other voice uh, express itself and, 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 and not using those spiritual beliefs anymore to try and control myself. But that was a big, big um, transition. Mm. Yep. <laughs> you know, what's coming up for me when you say that is uh, seeing it in cultural context. Because I come from the Middle East where, where the norm is actually to be a dragon. Ah. So people don't hold back. People say what they think most of the time um, with a lot of passion. And at times, you know, it really depends in who you are and how you take it. And, but what it does is, you know, people don't hide behind politeness and there are some cultures that are so conditioning us to be polite that we are disconnected from our gut feeling we actually don't really know what we feel what we want what is good or what is not serving us and i think it's it's a source for a lot of external disconnect in every part of our systems yes for example i see all of a sudden lately the level of disconnect in our education system um, that is created in families it's not natural to not see our children for so long it's not natural not to be involved in our children's life and yet it's the norm for years mm -hmm. and no wonder that kids are going through different phases of rebellion trying pushing boundaries to an extreme extent of suicidal and and you name it all all the 
diseases that we're experiencing because there's no connection there's no solid supportive community and there are no rights rights of passages and initiations in different phases of our life as let's say our ancestors or tribal societies indigenous societies societies always have had and and still have you can see it in some healthy societies that exercise that so yes you know our emotions our social conditioning our ability to tune in to uh, stay authentic and that's part of what we're not used to be encouraged as children you know yes I, I, you know, lately when I, I, I see how many, I, I've been just more tuned in, I'm curious, and I see a lot of people when a child cries, first of all, they want them to stop crying. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why? Let them cry. Mm -hmm. That's such a natural reaction to what they're feeling, and that's how they release. That's how naturally they bring themselves back to like, okay, I let something big out, and when I'm ready, I'm ready just one little example right there's so many other things one thing that is very concerning to me is the one that we reward children with candies sugars um ice cream if you do this or that if you be do that we'll have ice cream we'll have dessert we'll have this we'll have that and what are we creating Children, like people who can't uh, accept any no, who can't have, who have a hard time with boundaries or uh, no. Have no expectations seven. to be rewarded and physically addicted to sugar. Yep, more concretely, yep. Physically addicted to sugar. I see it in myself and I see it in others and I see how it's being conditioned with children and I see a bigger picture agenda actually in my son's high school where actually big corporations for some reason, and this is what I made a point for myself to explore, how, how, how did they create that foot in the door and put their vending machines and sell their products that are full of sugars and, and it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, socially, we it became a standard now. It's like it's it's, it's socially accepted uh, that that kind of nutrition, and and many people don't even question it because we're very used now to immediate pleasure. Right. So sugar is part of that. So immediate pleasure because we're having a hard time with whatever challenging emotion we're with. Um, so we don't want to feel, and so when we're faced with a challenging emotion one way we have to avoid feeling is to create immediate pleasure to try and change the experience and that's what we do to the children when we offer them a sweet exactly we not handle our own inability to experience emotion absolutely we project that on the child and then we create that vicious cycle again yes yeah exactly so it's a tough one because because children the way i see it you know um we need to start our our own work adults we adults need to do our own works you know and and the the, the children it's so easy it's so easy for them I, I i see it with my daughter you know like i i once i shift i mean it it makes it's 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 so easy it, it, she, you know she's so not a problem <laughs> And it's never been. So true. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So it's really, it's really to us um, to take our, our own lives, uh, you know, within our, our hands and, and, and decide what do we want it to be? How do we want to live it? That's true. I think one of the major realization that I have came through was that the only one I can change is myself. And any attempt to change another person will result in suffering. Yeah. 
because I'll have expectations and I have an agenda and I want to control. And that always leads to a disaster. Always. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting how life will bring us tests, right? Okay, where are you at with this one, Hila? Like right now. <laughs> And you know, just like you, I had this experience of being kind and wanting to facilitate dialogue for my son and his, and his father when they had a major, major disconnect and Ben didn't want to see his father. And at some point I thought, you know what, I'll open my house and his father can come and we can have those family dinners and slowly, you know, Then we'll warm up to Alan and maybe that will create the healing that needs to happen. And in hindsight, I realized that I wasn't considering my relationship with Alan and the intensity that we have. And how will that play out itself in that beautiful right. that I wanted to create? And it took me like good four or five meetings to realize not working he laughed my place is being violated my emotions are being um um disregarded the whole thing brought up for me again an issue of healthy boundaries and putting myself first even in, even before my son because my I, i was like ben first and i want to help him and blah 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 but it wasn't helpful for me right And it, it's also, you know, I guess I had this idea that I want to have harmonious relationship with everyone and everything. And it's not happening with my father's son. And it's, it's, it's something in me is still finding it challenge to accept, to, to see, you know what? Not everybody's going to love me. I'm not going to love everybody. And that's okay. Yeah, it's almost like, like giving ourselves permission to not be perfect and, and just allowing ourselves. Again, I see it as a spiritual belief that, you know, we have to mend all our relationships. We have to have good relationships with everybody. And sometimes it feels like this, again, like this voice that I was hearing, you know, like saying, No, it's all about self-acceptance and trying to impose something on me. It feels like the same kind of spiritual belief, you know? And um, sometimes it's just about being okay with, no, I don't want to. I don't feel like it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right for me right now. You know, sometimes that voice needs to be heard. Sometimes that voice is much older, you know? Sometimes there's the, the kid in there. Yes. That, that needs to speak up, that needs to be listened to, you know? And it's not about forcing the kid again. No, no, you're going to do this now. You're going to be good to all people and you're going to say hi to, to this person and thank you to this other one, you know? Like, it's <laughs> like, right. you know, I've learned many years ago as an educator, I don't say to my son, for example, I try to, oh, say thank you to so-and-so i say wow i'm i'm thanking your grandparents for doing that for you that was awesome that they did that i'm really grateful because i want to say thank you yeah if he wants to say thank you he'll say it and if not he won't and he will learn to say thank you when it's authentic and how do children learn who do they look up to who their parents, their parents. Yeah, absolutely. On a good case scenario, right? I mean, they, they, these days they're very much peer influence and that's where a lot of dysfunction is happening because again, children are not exposed to healthy community, healthy adults that can model to them in a very relaxed and authentic way, clear and open, loving communication, again, in, in an ideal society, right? And that's another thing that I've learned, you know, it's really great to have the intense emotions. And as an adult, I want to know what to do with that energy because it, 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 it's energy, right? It's this wave of whatever is coming. And this energy can be channeled to creativity, to passion, 
to speaking our truth in a very empowering and inspiring way to others. It's not, it, it doesn't have to be about um, just lashing out or just about saying everything that is agitating. Uh, that can be part of the process, but there comes a point where you actually want to be able to to speak to, okay, why this is coming to me and what do I want to do with this energy that is from a loving place that is constructive, that can create something new and exciting and something that can be of value and for the good of all. So, uh, yeah, amen to that. <laughs> amen to that. Authenticity, authenticity. Yeah. My that's certainly my key word right now. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and clear communication, you know, self-compassionate and clear communication is, yeah. the, is the key. And, and, and I see that with relationships that I have. So, um, and there are beautiful, again, grounds to exercise that and grow. I have some awesome friends that we've been doing it for a while and the level of intimacy that we have and the level of connection is just so beautiful and profound. And I have this with, with a person that was in my life as my spiritual mentor, and she's not in her body anymore. And I still have conversations with her. And there's times when something I'm like, oh, Alanis, thank you. <laughs> and I like, she comes from my heart to my head and I hear some kind of a beautiful wise advice or comment right mm -hmm. so that's possible as well with people that we're inspired by you know you don't have to be in touch with Eckhart Tolle on a daily basis with talking to him in order to like get the teaching and at the right moment something will come up and you'll have this yeah okay that's my pain body now or mm -hmm. whatever is showing up yeah yeah exactly Hmm, inspiring, inspiring. Yeah. It's, uh, it's learning to live from the heart, which is, I feel, what, what I'm here to do, actually. And I don't know what the end result is, but I just feel into each and every moment, each and every day, each and every experience, and what I love from the book I've read many years ago by uh, Neil Donald Welsh. Right. Yeah. Conversations with God. Yeah. That one was Friendship with God. And a major thing that stayed with me is like, ask myself, is it fear-based or is it love-based? Yeah. And if it's fear-based, what is the fear? And then invite invite the conversation with the fear right exactly so, uh, yeah and that takes practice and maturity and takes sometimes grace you know sometimes you don't know what the fuck happened i feel so awesome relaxed open i didn't do anything but i'm in such a beautiful state of mind okay you know and that that can happen too <laughs> Let's, let's give that a space too. You know, it doesn't have to be a constant struggle. Sometimes it comes as like a beautiful aha moment and sensations. And it's good to acknowledge that. Yeah, it's, it's what I find is, is each time I try to attach to a specific state of being, when I try to attach to it, I lose it. it you know, we're, and we even say that. So when I try, who is the I? Exactly. Well, it's, 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 it's whatever voice we're attaching to, right? That wants something, that place in us that wants something, that thinks that now is not okay enough, so I need something else. But what I'm noticing is it comes and goes, you know? We're, we're um, in trying to always abide in light and in just that one aspect of things, we're trying to exclude all the, the other side and and... And we're creating suffering by trying to do that. You know, everything is, is, is welcome. Everything. Everything's welcome. Mm. 
So it's not about excluding anything. So there's light, there's darkness, and, and it's all good. And it's, it's, for me, it's much more now about, can I, be, can I be okay with anything that comes my way mm -hmm. without trying to, you know, like choose this, exclude this, and, and you know, just a, a allowing mm -hmm. and being okay with any emotion. And that one is a, it, 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 it's quite an interesting one. You know, can I be okay with feeling insecure? Can I be okay with feeling sad, with feeling uh, even ashamed mm -hmm. you know, or guilty? Mm -hmm. Can I allow this to be there and not being totally taken, you know, like, like pulled down by the energy of that emotion. It's like, okay, it's there. I see it. All right. Thank you. And, and you just acknowledge it and you don't, you know, just not allow, not, not, not get taken by, by, by the energy. You know, my teacher used to say a few things. One thing she used to say, the transformation is in the seeing. So once you see it, sometimes you don't have to do anything. Just the seeing puts you in such a place where you process and you grow and, and a change is spontaneously occurring. Yes. So yes. the seeing is very powerful. Yeah. Another thing that you would say um, to that is when something intense is coming up and you allow it, and then you take it a bit further and you ask her, you ask, how does it serve me? How does it serve me? And I remember when she worked with me on that one, sometimes I would, I would say like, it doesn't serve me. I don't like it. I don't want it. It doesn't serve me. I couldn't, I couldn't see. I couldn't see how it can serve me. You know, until a few days or weeks or sometimes years later, it's like, wow. Yeah, everything is here to help. Everything shows us something. You know, in the work, um, one of one of the questions that are very powerful for myself and and i'm using it a lot with clients as well is you know we 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 do like our thoughts even you know when we say no i don't like this i don't like the thought for instance that says i'm not good enough you know nobody would say i like you know oh yeah i like that thought but there's a part of us that attaches to it we do and there is a benefit, and that's one of the questions in the work. So what benefit do you get from attaching to the thought? And inevitably, there is one. Once you start really dropping into the heart and, and really ask the question and wait, you'll see. You know, we'll see why. Oh, my God. It's like, you know, like for me, in attaching to the thought, I'm not good enough, what was the benefit? Well. I got to remain a victim. Mm -hmm. I got to not take responsibility for myself. Mm -hmm. I got to rely on external circumstances. So this way I don't have to do anything. It's not mine. It's, it's, it's because of the external world. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to take responsibility. So I'm not, it's not challenging. At the same time, even though I'm saying, oh, no, I don't like it. No, a part of me does. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I like that benefit and I like that benefit actually more than what it's costing me. So, but it's, it's, but once we start seeing this, like what benefit do I get in, in attaching to a specific thought and then seeing the cost of attaching to it, then, you know, then as you mentioned earlier, you know, it's the, in the seeing you're like, wow, that's actually insane. <laughs> <laughs> you realize that you know like the attachment to certain thoughts and beliefs it's like wow i mean it might have served me at one point but now it's like a a cloth a piece of clothing that's just too tight that you know like uh that we're trying to still fit in and but that doesn't you know that doesn't work anymore so i know that experience for real 
You do? It's some closes that I have. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm going to fit in those clothes again. <laughs> Time for shopping. Yay! Yeah, that's the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> that's the bright side. We get to go shopping. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Very good. So I'm thinking, in terms of recording, let's uh, let's conclude this. And yes, let's conclude this. So speak more about about your coaching and what you offer to people and maybe how people can contact you. They don't have to live close by, right? You, you can also do it via Zoom or Skype or... Yeah, I do. Um, I do actually most of my coaching uh, on Zoom or, or, or on Skype. And, um, and I use the work a lot as well to, to help with uh, transformation. So whatever we objective that, that we want, what is, you know, close to my heart. And that's something, you know, that I realized is, is in order to bring change, we need to have a clear intent. And um, so it, it's really about helping identifying so what is it that speaks to your heart what is wanting to come through you that makes sense that really wants to happen so it's it's helping a client identify that and then and then creating kind of a, a plan of action and in the way um question our beliefs because you know it will say oh no i can't uh, it's, I'm too old. It's too difficult. I don't have the resources. You know, it will find all kinds of excuses. And then we question that. And, uh, so we make space for clarity to, to always emerge. So, um, and the best way to contact me, uh, is Facebook for now. I'm building my website, but, uh, Facebook, Catherine. Catherine Tremblay. And what's, do you have a name for your business? It's actually my name. Uh, I work in both languages, in French and English. In English, I work under my name, Catherine Dion Tremblay, because there's many of us, many Catherine Tremblay in the world. And so, right, so Catherine Dion Tremblay is, uh, is my kind of my coaching name in, in English. And in French, I'm, I'm actually using a kind of a... A banner it's 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 if I do the translation is take your power back mm. that would be the uh, my yeah my name take your power back mm -hmm. take back yeah. your power that's beautiful yeah. and it's also remind me where you and I met we met in a choir where you know that's a very beautiful metaphor for people especially women to reconnect with our power with our voice with our authentic voice yes singing but it's knowing that the whole body is this vessel for the energy and part of how we express ourselves is with our voices with our words and and with chanting or singing ceremonies that's another with prayer that's a very powerful form of using our voices so yeah, my uh, my sister, my empowered sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it was a pleasure to uh, to speak with you today. Okay, and maybe we can chat later on Messenger how to post it because I'm new to the technology, but I love learning. Absolutely. So I'm going to stop the recording now and we can chat about those details. Okay. And I'm going to go. So I'm going to say.